is Australia behind bars. This is really jail, like real jail. They've done a con, they're doing their time. For the first time, cameras capture... The danger's there all the time, it's just when it's going to arise. What really goes on? No snitching, no ratting on. Inside three of Australia's maximum security prisons. If you can't defend yourself, you're not going to survive. You're generally dealing with the bad of the bad. Stop resisting the cuff. When shit go down, it's pretty full on. This is a world where you're either blue. Every day's a game of cat and mouse. Calm down. Tip it. Or you're green. The more relentless they are, the more relentless we are. I've located a Jalmay syringe. Can you comment on that? Doing time. Didn't know what jail was like till now. It's not a good place, eh? Up close and personal. I am over this life. I want to go home and I want to be a mum. It's hard getting there. From the first day behind bars... There's nothing I like about jail. ..to the last. All of these women get out at some point and you want them to, to come out better than what they came in. That's some Shawshank Redemption shit right there. In this episode, the race to save an inmate's life. She was non-responsive, her lips were purple. My assumption was that she was dead. But how did the drugs get in? So that could be the transfer there. Cell rates. Man, I'll get you to step out here over on the wall. The hunt for hidden weapons. Here we go. So I was in the S bend of the toilet. And the agony of a mum behind bars. First thing I want to do when I get out is get my little family back. Try and move on from this. Wellington Correctional Centre in rural New South Wales. One of 35 prisons in the state. Behind bars in Australia are some 42,000 prisoners. New South Wales employs more than 7,500 officers. There is green and there is blue. If you're blue, you're blue. Stand him up, stand him up. In this place, there's two teams and you've got to stick to your team. In Wellington, there's everything from dangerous drivers to murderers, including some of Australia's most vicious. It's a place where emotions are raw. Everything you feel is just very right, right up to your face. It's confronting. CEO Oipo, CEO Howarth. Each day starts with a roll call at 8 a.m. sharp. Good uh, morning, everyone. We've got a state of 490 with one TA. There's two sick leave, one of which was overnight. Here There's at Wellington, we've special. got about 200 staff, and our inmate population, our maximum state, is 592. We've got a, 130 minimum security, and the rest is maximum security. On shift today are 50 officers. Two duties, fall out. First duty is to release the prisoners for the day. It's called let go. Hey, morning everybody. We're a working jail. We've got corrective services industry, so we've had a lot of inmates that have had issues at other centres. They come here to Wellington and they're working, so their hands aren't idle. It's safer for them and it's, it's safer for the staff and the inmates at this centre. It is hard, but at the end of the day, you do your crime, you do the time, you know? I mean, that's just the way it is. With the jail in full swing, officers must focus on the daily reality, using intelligence to keep one step ahead of the inmates. When this jail first opened, it was probably the best jail in the state because there's no inmates. It was a great place. And then they got inmates. And with inmates comes contraband, either secretly made in cells or smuggled into jail by friends and family. So this is a display cupboard that's kept in the intel office and when they find a shiv or other form of contraband in the jail, they can keep it and put it on display. Whatever they can get their hands on to make a shiv, they'll make it. Like that one there is, looks like a bent nail. Shiv is prison slang for a weapon made by inmates. You've got a lot of shivs. You've got rope fashioned out of a sheet, tattoo guns. At the end of the day, it's our job to 
take it off them. You can't hide. Every action you take is observed, analysed, and it's just part of the, the prison system. The last thing you want is a group of inmates attacking another inmate, armed with a shiv. You've got to have rules, you've got to have a line in the sand. Today, the jail's elite IAT squad is about to raid C Block on the hunt for deadly contraband. IAT stands for the Immediate Action Team. And uh, basically what we do is we respond to all incidents that happen around the jail. Plans are now we're going to link up with the uh, security operations group and we're going to head down to Seapod and conduct targeted searches. The uh, inmates were a bit uh, boisterous yesterday, so we're looking for jar-made brews, syringes, jar-made shivs, excess linen, basically, yeah, anything they're not meant to have. Even before the raid starts, they're getting results. What's that? <laughs> Where was that at? It's decent. Yeah, it's a good little shiv. Officers at Wellington seize hundreds of items per year. Drugs, tobacco, mobile phones, or weapons like this. Where'd you get that? That might give it to uh, Gaming? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, just doing a head check. He said, just let the squad know I don't want to be in here anymore. I said, yeah, why? And he just held a palm, palm of his hand over the ship, you know? In jail, prisoners can use weapons to attack officers and each other. So he doesn't want to be in here anymore? No, he's going to blow out of the ring. A good start. But if there's one shiv, there'll be more. Fellas, just black hands your head for us, mate. The wing that we've been targeting is very well known to have um, jail-made syringes and weapons. So it is one of our problem wings, and uh, it's good to get in there and actually get the stuff out. Place your hands down by your side for me. Any sudden movements will be deemed as a threat and force will be used, you understand? It's important for us to stand our ground as correctional officers because we're running the jail. And if you, if you don't have a level of control, you can start to lose those wings and lose those areas, which then could consequently result in a riot. Dilwinia, on the outskirts of Sydney, is Australia's largest women's only prison. Dilwinia holds 531 inmates. We also have 262 staff working here. That includes custodial and non-custodial staff. And obviously it's the best female correctional centre in the, in the state. That's my opinion. <laughs> it's a prison that's fast filling up. Across New South Wales, there's been a 65% increase in the female prison population over the past decade. It's ugly, it's fucking disgusting. You have no control of your life. You're ruled by officers all day in, day out. You have no privacy. Like, your life is like your brother, but nothing nice about it. It's Saturday, the busiest day of the week at Dilwinia. Today, 115 family and friends will visit loved ones behind bars. Hang on, just a moment. Is this your next visitor? Visits are important, as it's proven that strong family bonds do reduce the risk of reoffending. Precious moments for inmates, but for corrections officers, these are tense times, as this is when drugs and contraband are often smuggled in. There's a couple of others that are coming in around about the same time who we think might have something going on. Yeah. One of them's kind of got stuff all the time anyway. Today, officers are on high alert, watching closely, as this is when drugs get into a jail. It's a huge deal. Um, unfortunately, you know, a number of inmates do have drug problems, um, so they do try and obtain illicit substances, and it's a security risk for my staff and a safety risk for both the staff and the inmates. And once inside, the dangers of drugs can erupt at any time. In a wing of Dilwinia, they've just received an emergency call of an inmate in distress. I was sitting in reception doing some paperwork and there was a um, response called over to U-Block for a non-responsive inmate and it sounded very urgent. I ran over, grabbed the nurse, told him briefly what happened and then he grabbed a, a trolley and we just ran over from reception to U-Block. When I walked into the cell, um, she was non-responsive. She was laying on the bed, face down. She was very pale. Her lips were purple. 
My assumption was that she was dead. But even if it's clear as day that they're dead, you still have to keep working on them until the paramedics arrive. The rest of U Block are locked in their cells, unable to see what's going on. The inmates are restless. It's now a life or death situation. Officers and the justice health nurse need to keep working until the ambulance arrives. Just do what you can until the paramedics arrive. At Wellington, the IAT is raiding CPOD for contraband. Drugs, weapons, anything they shouldn't have. They've found one weapon, now they're on the hunt for more. If I'll get you to step out here over on the wall. It's pretty fair to say the inmates hate IAT. We're the ones that are going in and tipping a wing upside down or a cell upside down, so I can't say that we're too popular with the inmates. We're about to conduct a regulation strip search and a regulation cell search. Do you have anything in your cell you wish to clear? Their job is to search cells, handcuff inmates, do the real dirty work and... Yeah, we don't like that. All prisoners fear a cell fire. Once lit, bed sheets become a fuel, which is why there's a strict cell limit of two sheets an inmate. So you should only have two sheets, so we'll count that dark one as one. The one he had on the window. And the bed sheet is one, so that's two. That can go. That can go. That can go. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in that cell. Uh, the inmate even told us there's a lot of stuff, so... Yeah, well, it'll take a bit to go through that one. This is sort of what we're looking for as well. So, wiring that's modified, no longer safe. I can't let you have that power board the way it is. I'll mark it on here as disposed so it reflects on your property card, all right? Not really any contraband as such just yet, but a lot of nuisance items, excess linen, excess tubs, cardboard. Eddie. Takes it out of this job. At Dilwinia, an inmate overdosed on heroin 17 minutes ago. Officers and the justice health nurse are struggling to keep her alive. As we were doing the compressions, we were all getting pretty puffed out, so we started going in a circle, taking turns around the inmate until the paramedics arrived. When the paramedics came, I just wanted her to wake up or to vomit or whatever, just so we can get any indication that she was alive. She started becoming more responsive. And then eventually she started expelling liquid from her mouth. That was a relief. It was a really very close call. The staff had to give her CPR and it was only um, pure luck. that I guess they were lucky enough to pull her through that situation. All I was thinking was that this could have gone so much worse. And I'm glad we were there to potentially save someone's life. After a night recovering in hospital, the overdose inmate is back at Dilwinia. Governor Emma Smith wants to know how the heroine got into her jail. How are you? Have a seat, mate. So I've come to speak to you to find out what happened on the weekend. So what happened? I uh, overdosed. OK. So obviously you are really lucky to have survived that. Really lucky. I can't stress that enough. Yeah? So we're going to manage you on segregation. Now, the reason for that is because you obviously had drugs and you had yeah. drug paraphernalia in your cell. Oh, I hate it because I'm just with my stuff. And I understand that, but I you just... Have a shower in the same clothes. We'll get you some clothes, that's OK. And, and you've got a shower in your cell. But we, it's cold. Hang on a sec. We have to keep you here. You nearly died. Yeah, I know. I understand yeah? That. So you're here so that they can give you the best care they can. You're lucky to be here. Yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. No I death in custody is a huge thing for both the staff and the inmate, and of course the inmate's loved ones. It, it affects everyone that's in the centre. Like, it's a huge thing, you know. 
you don't want to have to, that's something that you relive again and again, serious incidents like that. Hmm. Later today, the immediate action team steps up. We don't know what these girls have. We don't know if they have gel made shivs or syringes or anything that they can use against us. Face the wall down on your knees, put your hands on your head. At Wellington, the immediate action team is raiding sea pods searching for dangerous contraband. They already have one jail-made weapon and the hunt is on for more. Hey, Dan, you got something? That's a brute. I tell you what. Oh, sweet. That's not a brute. Ah, yeah. That would be a jar made brute. You, you can smell it sort of straight away. As soon as you t I take the lid off, a strong alcoholic odour emits from it. Chopped up fruit, whether it be apple, pear, this has got that natural sweetener in it. I'm um, led to believe they'll use uh, bread, just normal bread that they get issued, and that's how they get the fermentation going. Who knows how strong they are, because it can be, it smells pretty potent, like they burn your nostrils. The fact that it, they're always brown in colour, you can see all the ingre heavy ingredients have floated to the bottom. You probably would have drank that tonight or tomorrow. It smells pretty well ready. He's in here by himself, it's pretty hard for him to deny ownership. You love getting the pinch, love finding something. Can't always get a winner. But when you do, it's it's good. to Receiving. At Dilwinia, an inmate nearly died from an overdose of heroin smuggled into jail. That inmate's ready to move to MPU. Copy on our way. Now corrections officers need to transfer her to the multi-purpose unit for closer supervision. So we're just going up to the health centre in area one. We've got a segregation inmate that we need to move to the MPU. So all our seg moves are handcuffed and um, three officers. You know, we're just here to do a job every day as well. Like we get paid to come here, we have a job to do. So the inmates don't always see us like that, like we're just doing our job. They see us as the enemy. I'm going to get you to go to the back of the cell. So just face the wall down on your knees for me. Cross your ankles and put your hands on your head. There have been times where I think, yeah, my safety might be at risk. We don't know what these girls have. We don't know if they have gel made shivs or syringes or anything that they can use against us. Because you're running into the unknown. She faces up to two weeks in a special cell which is monitored around the clock. Are you good? Yep. Just had to move my hand around. Just be quiet and move Do forward. Do not con make any contact with them, all right? Just keep walking. News of the drug overdose has spread across the jail. Obviously, they just saw her come back, so I'm sure they're very happy that she's alive and, and she's back, so... Come on, let's go, go. Let's, go. Let's, go. Let's, go. let's go, let's go, let's go. Right be quiet me. and keep walking. I love you so much. All right, we just need to close that door for the search. All right, so I'm Officer Krusha from IIT. We're just going to do a regulation strip search, OK? No I'm going to give you a set of directions. If you give me any issues during the search, force may be used against you. Do you understand? Yeah. I'm going to put your hands by your side. Yeah. <clears throat> no worries. OK, bye. She was very compliant. Nothing found on the strip search, so she's come straight from the hospital into that cell, and she would have been searched when she got back to um, the jail the other night, or the other day when she got back. But no, she's very compliant. It was a very easy one for us. I've worked with male offenders as well, and it's a completely different dynamic. But the girls, they fuel each other by, I guess, working against us. So once one works against us, they all get into it. So it can be hard, like it can be really hard. Right across Australia, more than 2,000 mums are behind bars. Inmate Brittany is a mother of four, serving time for kidnapping. I've got four children. I had my first born when I was 14 years old. She was just she was just a breeze of a kid. She was awesome. Yeah. 
it was hard, you know, I could have lost a lot of my, like, my teenage years. But, um, I suppose it's probably a good thing, cos, you know, if I'm in jail now, I hate to see where I would have been if I didn't have her, you know? Yeah. Assuming Brittany gets parole, it will still be more than a year before she sees her three youngest children. They're, they're in my father's care and they, they know I'm in here, something that I haven't hidden from the kids. Um, I don't want my kids to think that I'm somewhere where I can come home to them. So, um, you know, it's been a lot for them to take in. Um, they're affected by it a lot, you know. So my dad, my parents think that it's better that my kids don't see me in here. It's not a nice place for kids to come. One in two prisoners inside Dilwinia have a history of substance abuse. Brittany's downfall was drugs. My drug of choice was ice, and it was definitely, you know, that circle of friends that I was hanging around because of the ice scene. That's where, you know, everything sort of just went shit. Yeah. I found myself to be the unwilling driver of a kidnapping. Um, you know, it got, it went a bit out of control and um, it ended up, I got three years, six months. If I had known what was gonna happen, I wouldn't have even given anyone a lift that night and like my heart breaks for the victim, it does. It wasn't until I was on bail for the charges that put me in here, it wasn't until I was on bail for that that I sort of picked my life up and, yeah, I guess it was just too late. Photo is everything to us in here. My son, I missed his first day at preschool. I miss, like, I haven't even picked him up or dropped him off at school yet, you know? They've learnt, they've learnt kayaking, like, He goes to preschool, I mean, kindergarten next year. I won't be there for his first day. I don't get to bond with him. My son, he's awesome, like, when we're at the beach and the seagulls are only get up, I'll protect you, mum, and, you know? So I miss, I miss all that. Yeah, I'm missing it all. I never thought I'd end up in here. Coming up at Wellington, the raid on Seapod is getting results. Yeah, I don't understand what's going on. The prisoners are not happy about it. If inmates are hating IIT, it means IIT doing their job right. But the hunt will go to a whole new level with the find of the day. There you go. Just come on the other side of this bike here. At Wellington, the IAT is targeting Seapod. So far, they've removed a weapon and alcohol, but they suspect inmates are hiding more contraband. So what we're looking for uh, when we're looking in the toilets is um, we're looking for any metal objects. We're also looking at, so this one here, it looks like something's floating up the S-Bend. So it could be a package, it could be another shiv. We don't know, we're just about to get the, um, the inspection camera and we'll put it in and we'll see what we can find. The only way that we picked up on that was walking out of the cell and I saw something shiny in the bottom of the bowl. Yeah, so this is a, um, an inspection camera. It allows us to look up um, S-bends in toilets. What do you got? There you go. Here we go. So I've located a uh, jar made weapon. It was in the S bend of the toilet. So we'll now get the inmate in, caution and question him, and we'll go from there. Do you want him there? Yeah, bring him in. Whilst conducting a regulation cell search, I've looked into the toilet and I saw a metal object. Can you tell me anything about that item? How long have you been in this cell for? Uh, a week. 
about a week, so it's been longer than 24 hours. Yeah. So you'd know that you've got 24 hours to declare anything that is not well, yours. Did you find it? So it was in the S-bend of the toilet. Well, how do I know that I can't so, put my hand in the S-bend? No, but you can drop it in there. Why would I drop it in there? So he's denying it. Yeah, you really can't deny it when it's in your toilet and you use the toilet 24 hours a day. I'm not saying you should put it there, but why would I put it there? Like, I'm not going to put my hand in the S-bend and have a blade out of there, you know what I mean? Well, people don't put syringes up their ass either, but they do. Stranger things have happened. So is there anything you can tell me about that weapon? No. Nah. Because it was in your cell and you've been in this cell for longer than 24 hours, you're going to be charged for it, you understand? Oh, oh, no worries. This is what we're looking for to get it out of the centre. It is sharpened to a point, so th this could be dangerous if used either on other inmates or officers. The most severe penalty that he can get is anywhere from 48 days and upwards, and, and it could be off activities, so he may not be able to go and attend the Oval. He may also be off his telephone, so all his telephones will be barred, and he may only have contact to his next of kin. We've uh, completed the search in C Pod today. We've uh, pulled out a heap of excess linen, excess property tubs, some nuisance items. We located a jar made shiv, a bottle of jar made brew. Jump back in, mate. It is a game of cat and mouse, but oh, I'm persistent. I'll keep looking. <laughs> and then if I don't find it, I'll come back the next day and keep looking. In Dilwinia, inmate Brittany is serving almost four years for her part in a kidnapping. Oh, Brittany, yeah. <laughs> Today, Brittany is turning 29, and after four months inside, she's about to start her first job in jail. That's a pretty good birthday present in here, I reckon. Yeah. Um, did you call Morgan? I sure did, yeah. You've got a job today? Oh, OK. In the hygiene crew? Yeah. Just you're out outside here doing educational buildings and stuff like that. Okay. Okay. All right. You're good. Yeah. Okay, okay hygiene, so gonna... ladies. I'm gonna go to hygiene. Let's go, ladies. Hygiene. The hygiene unit cleans the indoor common areas and the prison grounds. Grab both the mops as well, please, ladies. All right. Like all working inmates, Brittany will be paid. Brittany will be starting on 24.69, which entails her working roughly about two and a half hours every day from Monday to Friday. I'm rich. While $24.69 a week isn't much, keeping a job is one step towards parole and seeing her three youngest children again. That means doing whatever it takes. Any form of cleaning work is shit. It's crap. But, um... You know, it's all right. The girls are cool to work with. It's, it's a good little giggle for two and a half hours a day. Prisoners are set goals. Put in the work and behave, and they can eventually progress to lighter security, enjoy more privileges, and even get daily work release on the outside. Obviously, when I receive an inmate into this centre, the, the goal is inmates usually start in Area 1, um, and then if they do the, all the right things, they, you know, attend work, they don't receive negative case notes, they then progress to Area 2, and then hopefully progress out, you know, to day and weekend leave and, and things like that. In the case of Brittany, she started in Area 1, and now she's progressed to area two, which is great. You know, that's that's a, a great accomplishment for her and something she should be proud of. There's nothing I like about jail. Uh, there's a lot that I put up with and that I can deal with, and but there's nothing I like about jail. Is that it? So Neil hey, found that pay rise. That pay rise? <laughs> that's up to the bosses. But Brittany's biggest challenge is around the corner when she tries to get into Dilwinia's drug treatment program. Over at reception, some of Wellington's inmates are on the move as part of the daily transfer between jails. But not everyone is happy about it. And you can get a few that have a bit of a temper tantrum up, so um, it can be a pretty volatile place to work sometimes. And when inmates are angry, deadly situations can erupt. You all right? Have you got some... You got some paper towel? 
This happens quite a lot, so often they'll sell palm or this guy, in this case, he's actually swallowed razor blades, which, you know, it dumbfounds me. Why would you swallow a razor blade? It's not good for you. Swallowing the razor blade just to try and get off an escort, like to self-harm, to do like, harm to your body where you could possibly die, just to stop being moved from one location to another, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. At Wellington, an inmate has suddenly told officers he swallowed a razor blade. It happened during the daily transfer of prisoners between jails. Yep. We basically get them up here with their property, get them all loaded up. Now, escort staff come in and cuff them up and take them and put them on the truck. With the justice health nurse on the way, Officer Daniel is keeping a close eye on the inmate. What are you doing? So is that... Did you hurt yourself? No, no, no. And then how'd you swallow them? Were they or anything? No, just one. Just razor blade. One razor blade when, in your mouth. When? When? Just then. Some of the damage that happens when they swallow a razor blade is, look, I'm, I'm no medical professional, but you can imagine a sharp blade going down through your esophagus and into your stomach. I've seen cases where they, they've had to cut people open because the blade was stuck and wasn't, wasn't passing through. We're looking after you, that's all we do. You're just disappointed that you swallowed it. Having recovered from a heroin overdose, the Dilwinia inmate will now spend up to two weeks in segregation. How the drugs got into the jail has been caught on CCTV. We have local intelligence that has stated the, the drugs, the illicit drugs, was brought through our visit area. So what I'm doing here is reviewing the visitor walking into the complex to see if there's any suspicious behaviour. So the gentleman's entering the complex, OK? It, it looks like he's putting his hands down the front of his pants to hide the contraband because we cannot check that area by law. We can only check their pockets and their shoes, etc. The inmate will come out in overalls. He will get up, he'll greet her. He's hugged her, kissed her. So that could be the transfer there. You'll see with the inmate herself, she's putting her hand down to the top of her bra, where she'll secrete the contraband in her bra. The overalls are a bit bigger up there, but are tighter around the waist. She has to work it all the way down to be able to get into her genital area, because we cannot search the genital areas. It's against policy and law. You'll see she walks in. She's the first one to come in. She's playing with her hair. She'll start playing with the overalls. She'll walk down to us, towards the camera. She will turn her back to the one camera in there. She starts moving around the overalls around the crotch area, adjusting, and then she will wait for her strip search. She will go through that door to be strip searched. So she's aware of that, that she's going to be strip searched after this visit. So she's prepared herself. She's very good at what she's done. She's very smooth, and she's made it look very easy. A clause will be submitted by the intelligence to ban this visitor, to impose a ban, whether it be a period of a few years or an indefinite ban, because he has introduced contraband into a correctional centre. Short of banning face-to-face -face visits, the flow of illicit drugs into prison is extremely difficult to stop. This is why cell raids are an unwelcome but necessary daily part of prison life. We put in place a number of different techniques to try and limit these types of incidents, including search operations. We have targeted search operations as well as random searches that we conduct throughout the centre. I'm extremely lucky that staff managed to get the best outcome for this incident. You know, it could have been very different. What are you doing? At Wellington, the inmate who told officers that he so swallowed that, a razor blade is being questioned in the cell. And then how'd you swallow them? Were they or anything? Just one. Just razor blade. One razor blade in when, your mouth. When? When? Just then. So the inmate said you should razor blades, obviously, because they, you know, we like to keep everybody clean in prison. Um, but there's also the self-harm element. While they wait for the justice health nurse, Officer Daniel has found out why the inmate took such a drastic step. In this case, 100% he didn't want to go anywhere else. Uh, he's from this area, his family's from this area. He just didn't want to go. 
and cannot see the reason why he was being sent away. We, yeah, but we needed to get inmates out, right, to make more sentence beds here. So your name would have just come up on a list and we would have done it, all right? So this was not a prejudice against you at all. It would be much better if you would have just approached me and actually talked to me about it, because I could have done something about it. Some people take these desperate measures, like, far too quickly, but uh, they probably just see no other way of dealing with it. And they've done this before, I would say. Um, so this guy has obviously seen no other way out and just grabbed the razor and went for it. Is he going to go out? He'll have to, yeah. The inmate will be handed over to Justice Health for a full physical and mental health assessment. If it is a blade, he may need surgery to remove it. So he needs to go out for an X-ray now, which he most likely knew that was going to happen. So then once he comes back to us, we will then put him on a self-harm watch and go through the whole self-harm process. So you're going for a drive to hospital. We're going to get you X-rayed, and then you obviously you know that you're going to be put on a self-harm watch. Safe cell, yeah. The public don't see what we go through. Uh, they don't see these incidents like the, the self-harm, the inmate holding that razor blade to their throat, like literally, you know, six inches from where you're trying to talk to them. Um, it's pretty confronting. But then, just as he's about to go to hospital, yeah. the truth comes out. Following a further investigation and, the, and discussion with the inmate, he actually has admitted that it was just a piece of fall from the, the dinner trays that they issued every night. So they may tend, tend to fake, you know, show a razor blade and then swallow a, a aluminium or something else just to give us the opinion that they have done something. No question, at Wellington, they're good at keeping the dangerous guys in. But in the Australian bush, keeping the bad guys out presents a different challenge. So I've just been told by the gate staff that we've got a snake in the vehicle dock area. We get a lot of snakes in here, most of them are brown snakes, which are quite dangerous. So staff at this jail, myself included, had done a snake catching course. So I'll have a look at the size of it, and then if we have to catch it and relocate it somewhere else, that's what we'll do that so it's not a very big snake so i'll just go and get a bit of cardboard and pick it up and put it in a box and relocate it it actually looks like a bandy bandy snake He's going to play hard to get. <laughs> Where'd he go? No. That's it. Hold it there. Got him? So he's in the bucket. He's quite lively. So what I'll do now is I'll take it across to the next door neighbour's paddock and release it back into the bush so it can live out its days as a happy brown snake. Officer Dave one, snake nil. Mother of four, Brittany has had a serious drug problem. To make parole and see her children, Brittany needs to clean up her act. That means she must enter a rehab program designed to help inmates kick their habit. Hi, Brittany. I'm Kylie. Yep. I'm IDAPT is an intensive drug and alcohol treatment program. Come with me. These individuals that are in the, the program, they uh, live together in a house, they uh, do groups together, and they heal together. All right. OK. We're here to um, do your orientation for yep. group. Have you done programs before? Mm, not really. OK. Nothing like this anyway, no. OK. And why do you want to do the IDAP program? Um, for my parole. Okay. Um, and because I wanted to do rehab on the outside. Mm -hmm. So I was told this was like the closest thing in jail to that. So, yep. yeah. Brittany appears to be somebody who is going to be a little bit resistant. She's motivated by parole. 
is that the only motivating factor that you have for Ida? No, 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 no. Um, my kids are with my dad, mm -hmm. so in order for me to like just get straight out of jail and get my kids back, yep. I had to do some sort of rehab. Yeah. She did mention that she has children and that she would like to get her children back. So I love uh, dealing with people like Brittany who are a little bit resistant to the program because what actually will happen is that those people end up making the biggest changes. They have the biggest um, aha moments in the program. All right. Be good. Have fun. Good, all right. I will, I'll write you. Yeah. you, see you guys. As part of the rehab, Brittany must move into a different section of the jail. But if she steps out of line, she could be thrown out of the program. Don't um, stuff up. Yeah, right, keep out of trouble. Yep. No charges. Yep. Right. No positive urines if you yep. get tested. Right. You're here to do all that to yeah. progress. All right. Yep. Yeah. This place is huge. I'm used to being locked in. And it doesn't take long for Brittany to find old mates in new surroundings. Oh my god. I wait. They're like, oh, you're free. Like, they just let me in, and I'm like, free. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm free. Hi. Hello. Good seeing you. If you see, tell her I'm here. I'm right around the whole place looking for you. Are you over this side, Brittany? Yeah. Where? Where? Right now. Just got here. I'm right around the whole place looking for you. What you do? Literally just then, you're the first person who was like walking around asking everyone. Oh my god. Huh? No, just me. Come here for IDAP. Oh man. Yeah. Well, my goals are just stick with my kids, get a stable job, build a home for me and the kids again, and just, yeah, try and move on from this. Yeah. Brittany doesn't want her younger kids to see her until she's out. But tomorrow, her teenage daughter is coming for a visit. Just got myself all printed up for my visit with my daughter and my partner, and I'm pretty excited. Yep. I had my first-born daughter when I was 14. Um, so she's about to turn 15 now. She's a little soldier, yeah. I will. For any parent behind bars, family visits are the highlight of the week. I'm actually really excited to see them today. I haven't seen them for about six weeks. Yeah, I barely slept last night. I barely sleep on Friday nights when I know I've got a visit on the Saturday. Women in custody can't go to the shops. They can't do all the normal things that a normal woman would do. The time they get to spend with their family and that connection that they get to bond with, um, it's a huge thing. Most people are lucky enough to, to see their children every day and to spend large amounts of time with them. That's not the case with inmates, so any time that they can get with their, with their family and their loved ones, you know, they value that. That's one of the most valuable things while they're in custody. Inmates must change into special coveralls before they can see their visitors. Which is a bit confronting, but, you know, I'm pretty used to it by now. I just get unmerced and, you know, yeah. To here, we go just get our jumpsuits out of the cover there and put it on. And I think the point of it is so that, like, you can't sneak anything into it, you know, because they zip us up with the back and they put a zip tie on it. They lock us up. Yeah. And after the visit, the staff will check the jumpsuit for any rips or tears and Brittany will be strip searched. Brittany's boyfriend and her teenage daughter have driven almost two hours for a visit that's restricted to just 40 minutes. Hey, baby. She's a beautiful girl. She goes to school every day. She's one of the smartest kids I know. Yeah. Okay. It's putrid and it's putrid. I'm ashamed. It's grey. It's grey. I'm not even in my thirties yet. I'm grey. You're not even in your thirties. <laughs> yeah, I'll face through with you, dig it. No, no, no. I'm not even forty yet. I'm Great. I'm gonna be in here for your 16th and I wanna be in here for my 30th. Yeah, and I also realise that you're gonna yeah, be... Is that when you get out? You're gonna be in here for your last 
years of being I know. in your 20s. I know. That's the point. It's the same as me. I'll celebrate my 20s in jail. You can do it too. Couple goals. You get up before you're 30. Family for inmates is such an important thing, you know, particularly your children. Most mothers, um, their children are their world, and inmates are no different. Fat as little as fingers. What's up, guys? All right, my fatties. Can't believe that was done. It's a quick visit, eh? Last week. Contact is great. They get to spend that visit time with their family. They get to, you know, give their kids a hug. But then that's over. And that's hard. It's hard to walk away from your children. And we see that with the women here. You know, no one wants to say goodbye to their kids. Yeah. It's a 40 minute visit, but it just feels like 20 minutes. And we're only one visit a week. Like, and they've got to come so far just for 40 minutes, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> If you've got your family and you've got those really strong relationships, you are less likely to come back. It's a, it's a fact. Love you, baby. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Come on. Oh. See you, baby. See you. It was really good. I love seeing them. It was good. My partner's got some fat. <laughs> he probably thinks the same thing about me, too. <laughs> First thing I want to do when I get out is take my kids out and do something nice with them and get my little family back. Next time on Australia Behind Bars. If they've got any type of drug on them, we will find them. An early morning raid. Hands on your head. Hands on your head. Uncovers contraband on a number of inmates. Officers find a mystery package. There's a package over there. It didn't quite make it over the fence into their yard. And Jade's release is thrown into jeopardy. Why were my pills in somebody else's pocket? <laughs>